Hey, Don Copeland here today. We're gonna to show you something we've been getting a whole million questions about. And so we took the time, we've set it up so you can do it right. How do I do DTF on my DTG? In this case, we're gonna use the G4. And uh, let's talk a little bit about what the applications of this are, that, and we're gonna to try to represent a couple of those here in the video. Uh, one of the biggest things people really have been asking about is being able to, to do DTG type of printing onto non-cotton type of fabrics, your synthetics, your polyesters, your tri-blends, and the like. And what we're going to find is that we're able to do this with the transfer process, which you can't do in direct print. Another thing that we get a lot of questions about is doing name tags, I mean, tags like in the back of a shirt, telling you, you know, washing instructions, labeling it, private labeling it for a customer, size of the shirt and all of that. Really easy to do with this. You can print out a full sheet of them, cut them up, press them on. If you've got the right heat presses, we'll show you at the end of the video. You can actually be putting the transfer on the front and on the, the, the tag inside of the, the neck at the same time. And another has been, there's been a lot of questions about how do I print on long sleeves or weird positioning with my direct -to garment printer? Well, guess what? With this process, it's simple enough because it has nothing to do with the printer. You can print it out on a sheet, cut it out, and as long as you can get it into the heat press to get it aligned properly, you're gonna be able to do the sleeve. So let's start into the process of what we're doing. You really have changed nothing on my DTG, on the G4. What I'm gonna start out with is with my vacuum platen on. I'm gonna pull a t-shirt up onto it. Make sure it's smoothed out. All right, tucked in. What that's gonna do is it's gonna activate the actual vacuum and actually having the shirt on top of it gives us better hold down than if you just lay the sheet on top of it by itself because there's no leakage now. Everything's being drawn through the shirt. Don't ask me how I know that. So we have here, these are some of our pre-cut sheets. Uh, one of the cool things that we bring to the table that I haven't been able to find a lot of by my research on it is we actually have a hot peel film. The hot peel film is basically an A3. It is a little over 11.75 wide by 16.5 inches long. I'm gonna lay it on here. It will come to you when you buy your packages, be a top and a bottom. You'll get to notice the subtle difference as you go. The most important thing is just leave it in the pack that it comes in, mark that side of the package up, and just make sure you keep that side up. Because the film is kind of hazy on both sides, but the side that's more hazy is actually the side that we want to print to. So you're gonna lay this down on here. I like to just slowly pull it up to the lines to the top. If you want to, if you want to sacrifice the shirt, you actually could mark on the shirt where your actual lines are. But we're not as worried about that. I'm going a little bit undersized on my print. Align that to the front. It's got a nice smooth finish. You want to try not to touch the surface too much that you're printing on. If you are going to need to smooth it down or anything like that, just take a nitrile glove or something like that and wear it when you're smoothing it down. I'm going to go ahead and load it just like we would for a traditional print for our DTG. Let it set it tight. So we're not going to go into a lot of detail in the software. When you do uh, set up with us to, to do the DT, DTF on your DTG, uh, we, will, we will hook you up with the print mode that we have set up, or print modes we've set up to be able to do DTF. As you see here, I have one called direct to film 12 by 12, which is the resolution I'm printing at bi-directional with a highlight white. And you'll notice something that's kind of unique here that you're not used to seeing on your regular uh, prints when you bring them in to DTG is Everything's backwards and there's white because when you bring in an item and you're going to be doing it as a transfer, you need to do a mirroring of the image and then you put a white on top of that. So you're going to think everything's going to be backwards. You do not need to do anything different to your artwork if you've done it in the past for DTG and in regards to how you would treat it to do a transfer in this case. So simply bring in the image, the, the actual cue itself, when you have this specific print mode selected, is going to automatically mirror the image. It's going to automatically generate the white highlight, the white layer at this, the level you want it to be. And in this one, we've actually got it doing a highlight white as well, so that those areas that are white are going to get hit twice with the white ink. And then it's going to be ready to print. So I brought, brought one in. This is going to be some sleeve prints. These are going to be tags for the back. I'm gonna get those going. That was a PDF file that I brought in. It could be in an AI. Just say, again, nothing has changed in the operation of the RIP. It's just gonna be the actual print mode that you select. Go ahead and process this. 
My, uh, my sheets, like I said, they are A4 size sheet. My image is basically about a 10 and a half to 11 inches by uh, 14 and a half or so. So we have plenty of room on that page when we go to print it. Give you an idea what the print cost on this is gonna be. Again, we got four and then we got 10. We have 10 tags and we have four of the flames. Total job cost on this is gonna be about 81 cents for the ink. And then we're going to have the expense of the sheet and the, the expense of the powder. Suffice to say, you're going to be way under $2 for this entire transfer process. I'm gonna go ahead and process the next, which is a hot rod car we're gonna put. I wanna go ahead and process that so it's ready as well to go. And then we'll get this sent over to the printer and get it printing. While that's ripping, we'll send this over to print. All right, here we have it. As you can see, we printed it out. A little different than what you're used to seeing. You're gonna have your, your uh, white side up. It is a bit wet right now. So what I'm gonna do is be really gentle as I pick this up, because we need to let it set a little bit before we go to put the powder on it. I'm gonna pick it up, all right? I'm actually, I like to do this just to get a slight gel on it. Well, that's sitting there. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my next sheet to get our hot rod printing. I don't, I'm not wanting to dry that completely. I'm literally just trying to get it to skim over. Pull another one of these on. All right, hit the load button. And we'll let loose the car. So we were a little over 80 cents for this other print which was multiple prints. The, the media is gonna be roughly 80 cents a sheet, depending on how many sheets you're buying at a time. And then your powder, is really hard to gauge how much powder you're gonna use, but it's very, very minimal, as you'll see when we put it on. Um, I would say on the extreme side, you would have maybe a nickel worth of media on a sheet like this, because what happens, uh, the powder, when you put it on, you actually beat off that shake off the additional that doesn't stick so it gets recycled. All right, well that's printing. We're gonna to come to the, the, the most exciting part of our... So the next thing you're gonna need is a mortar. If you don't have a mortar, we actually have them available for sale on Coleman and Company, so you're good to go. This is actually a plastic tube. It's a five inch plastic tube that we've, we've uh, kind of designed to make this an easy way to apply and kind of control the powder that is put on. So I put in here, I've got maybe a half an inch of powder. What I'm gonna do is gonna take my sheet, which now it is kind of gelled up enough that it's not going to run as I drop it in. I drop it in and see it naturally is gonna fit around the curve. Now I'm gonna just shake this back and forth and make sure that I get powder all over the ink. There's not a, a science to this but it is kind of satisfying. Get it all over. Now, as you see, the powder falls to the bottom. As I do that, I'm shaking loose any, as much loose powder as possible on it. And then this is, a, this is an optional item. We don't sell them here at Coldessi, but you need to have a miniature hockey stick or something literally just to, to beat this on the outside, which is knocking loose any excess powder. You could use your hand. Hannah's laughing at me right now. Um, it also works on your photographer. This helps to knock loose any powder as much as possible. And it's easier than using your hand. I'm gonna open this up, you bring it up. Shake it a bit, because you are gonna have some powder, no doubt, residual powder down on the bottom. And then what you can do, is so I have a garbage can here. Sit a garbage can over it, and literally if you, flick it, you'll see. And what, what I'm seeing is a confirmation that I've done a pretty good job because I'm not seeing a lot of powder come loose from here, which means the hockey stick, which Hannah laughed about, worked perfectly. Now, if you don't have hockey sticks, you could probably use a mini baseball bat or a tennis racket. I'm just saying. All right, so this is now covered in powder. Let's just zoom in here and kind of see what you've got there. There's actually a, a kind of a dustiness to the powder there. Not a lot of powder stuck to the sheet, which is good. 
and it'll get taken care of when we go to transfer anyway. So we brought our sheet over here, laid it, centered up on our platen as best as possible. And you can do this on a clamshell, you can do this, it's probably better if you have a slide in and out type of press, uh, which is what we're gonna show you afterwards pressing on these with. But a hover press like this DK, uh, George Knight DK20A will work. Just make sure you are hovering. And I've got this set to 350 degrees. And at two minutes, I'm gonna bring this down until it just locks in. I'm literally leaving this here for two minutes and this is going to melt my glue. Get it set up so it's ready to transfer. There we go. So we have now the powder is pretty much all melted. Just to have a little bit of loose powder. If you want to set it back in a little bit, it's going to vary a little bit by your press. And if you find that your press is starting to yellow parts of it, not others, you may want to do this in two segments. But two minutes, two and a half minutes, whatever it requires on your press to get it up. And what, what you can do is take and look at this under a loop or with a magnifying glass. And what you want to see is you want to see that this is shiny and kind of a consistent coverage of glue, not still real powdery, which I can tell you this is, that's the case with this. And here we're doing, we're doing the same thing we did on the other transfers. So I've already pounded it down. I'm just going to hit this a bit, trying to release as much of that powder as possible until it self unloads the lid. Then take it over and I'm going to There we go. Get this powder all on it. And there we have the hot rod. Okay, we're going to now transfer these uh, DTF transfers we've done. This is a sleeve print. We're going to put on a 100% polyester. I think this is, this is a vapor apparel, vapor, vapor apparel um, shirt with a long sleeve. We're going to do a long sleeve because we get a lot of questions about doing sleeves uh, and we get a lot of questions about doing polyester. So we're going to do that. We're also going to put the tag in on another shirt. What we're going to do is show you how we can actually do the front of the shirt and the tag at the same time we have their proper palette on here. So we're going to start off with the sleeve. I want to see which one. I want this from the top going down. So I'm going to use this sleeve. This is my right side. Boom. That's the one I want. So I'm going to put it in here. And then since these shirts have a seam underneath, as you can see, we're just going to take this sleeve pad, which you can get through Coleman and Company. And that's going to eliminate that seam inside of the sleeve. You'll see when we line this up on here, slide it up a little bit further, you'll actually still be able to see the natural center line on the sleeve is still going to be there. I'm going to use that as my reference point. Okay. And then you just choose a distance you want to come down from the sleeve. You know, we'll just do like a hands width or so, a little over hands width. We're going to lay this on, kind of centered on that stripe right there. Just going to slide it in. We've got this set, heavy pressure. Because it's a poly, I don't generally go all the way up to 300. You'll want to experiment with some of your polys. You may find that you, you had to go to 280, 275, depending on the type of poly. And you may only go to seven or eight seconds. So it is a little bit of experimentation with the difference. We're going to do this at 10, 285. Now, if this was cotton, we generally tell you about 300, 305 for, for 10 seconds. Okay, it's done. We're going to pull this out. It's a hot peel, so I'm just going to pull that right off. Take a finishing sheet. This is a parchment sheet. You could use uh, the, the, re the release sheets we have on Coleman and Company. You could use a Teflon sheet. They'll all give you slightly different results. One of the the two purposes of this, set the glue just a little bit deeper into the fibers. Number two, what it's going to do, if there was any residual glue on the sheet that transferred on here, it's just going to bury it right into the fiber itself. So this is just going to be a five second press. You see we've got it set to cycle between 10 and 5. There you go. Beautiful sleeve press onto, did I mention this is 100% polyester? No other way to do this. 
You could sublimate it, but you're not going to get this, these colors because it's a light blue shirt. You're going to see things are going to tend to blue. And if I would have printed, I have some other sleeves that we did. If we would have done others that were actually with white text, there would be no text there because you can't do white with sublimation. So we've taken off the, the standard platen. We put on here what is called the, the Stahl's uh, Tag Platen. All right. And Hannah just gave me the two second tour on how to put this on here. She did such a good job putting it on. I'm not going to try to load it myself. We actually have videos online about how to use this. You can get this through Coleman and Company. If you want to talk to your, uh, your rep at Coleman and Company, they can hook you up and get one of these ordered for you. If you're doing a lot of these tags and shirts and fronts at the same time, it's the way to do it. Trust me. So we're going to take our beautiful hot rod car, put it on here. Probably about right there. Beyond the hand below. And then this tag that I'm using is actually one with black text on it. Put that up right there. Probably just about the right size we chose to do that. And slide this in. Same as before, 10 seconds heavy pressure. Hot peel, hot peel. I'm going to finish this the same way. This is going to be a five second heavy pressure press. All right, there we have it. We are doing DTG prints that are going on to polyesters, performance wares. You know, this has got white on it, all right? We didn't do it on a black shirt, but you could have done this on a black shirt, a gray shirt, a red shirt. And uh, if UPS would have been here on time today, we'd have done them on those. But we did have these vapor apparels laying around, so we went ahead and transferred to them. Uh, it's a very, this is a beautiful thing about this. It's a very stretchable type of print. You don't get any cracking. We've had, we've had customers who have done more than 50 washes on these type of shirts and very, very, very little degradation. Full color, be able to do fades, everything like that, that you can't do with screen printing easily and certainly not in customization. We can take this car and size it five different sizes and it doesn't take any screens or anything like that. So it's just a great way, great addition to your existing printer. If you already have a G4, get in touch with us. We'll hook you up with the, the, the mortar and the powder, which is really all you're gonna need to add that in the, the film. So you can start doing this right away. We'll get you the, the proper drivers for it. And uh, if you're looking at a new printer, look at the, the whole new uh, range of products you're gonna be able to do. I'm Don Copeland and this is DTG DTF.